excited to be here with you all after three years of no Comic Con. Back in Hall H to kick off the year. And what better way to kick it off than with such an awesome franchise, Dungeons and Dragons. Yeah. It's something so near and dear to my heart and I'm sure the same goes for you guys. Today we're gonna to have some awesome conversations with some of the guys behind the movies as well as the incredible cast. But remember, anything you guys see here is just for you guys at Hall H. So, yeah, please don't record. I know you already said it, but now I'm saying it also. So now no, no take backs. <laughs> is everybody ready to get started? Let's kick off with a quick behind the scenes look with the cast and filmmakers of Dungeons and Dragons Honor Among Thieves. Hello San Diego Comic Con! Super excited to be here with you all after three years of no Comic Con back in Hall H to kick off the year, and what better way to kick it off than with such an awesome franchise, Dungeons and Dragons. Yeah. It's something so near and dear to my heart, and I'm sure the same goes for you guys. Today we're gonna to have some awesome conversations with some of the guys behind the movies, as well as the incredible cast. But remember, anything you guys see here is just for you guys at Hall H. So, yeah, please don't record. I know you already said it, but now I'm saying it also. So now no, no take backs. <laughs> Is everybody ready to get started? Let's kick off with a quick behind the scenes look with the cast and filmmakers of Dungeons and Dragons Honor Among Thieves. Well, I don't want to waste any more time. Let's get into this. I want to get you guys in contact with the filmmakers. First, let's bring up one of the producers of the film, a filmmaker behind a handful of movies you may have heard of before. Iron Man, The Avengers, Guardians of the Galaxy, Spider-Man Homecoming. Give it up for Jeremy Latchum. <laughs> Dude, I am doing so well to be standing on the stage. It's awesome to be back at Comic Con. And I, I feel like I grew up at Comic Con. Like, I, I've been coming to Comic Con for so long since the very first Iron Man 1 presentation. And uh, to be here with something like this that's something totally like brand new, it's like, it's crazy, guys. It's exciting. I'm we'll really get some excited. people up here with you. How does that Absolutely. Happen? Awesome. Next. Please welcome the film's directing and screenwriting duo. They've written Horrible Bosses, Spider-Man Homecoming, and directed Game Night. Here's Jonathan Goldstein and John Francis Daly. Feeling. So good, guys. I love you guys. Thank you so much for coming out here. Guys, we have been in the trenches with COVID and making this movie for two years, and to see your faces is so thrilling for us because it reminds us why we do this. Thank you for being here. Really appreciate it. Well, let's get into it. Let's start with Jeremy. Can you tell me every... Oh, can you tell everyone about the genesis of the project? What appealed to you about it, and how much did you know about the world of D&D coming into the film? So, I, uh, I had worked with John and Jonathan on a movie that I love called Spider-Man Homecoming that these guys have written. And uh, to me, there's this sense of, of heart and humor and spectacle and this ability to balance tone, and that is what makes these kind of movies, to me, work is this like tonal balance between thrilling and exciting and heartfelt and you want to cry and you want, anyways. I knew they could do all of that and I was so excited to find out that they were on this. 
And when they called me and the studios called and, and everyone was like, we, we want to make a D&D &D movie and launch something totally new and it's, it's with Jonathan and John, I was like, all right, I am 1,000% in and it's been a journey since that phone call of non-stop work for two years, <laughs> two and a half years. I did not stop the whole time. Yeah, not at all. It's very fun. John? Uh, I, um, I, both of us have a long history with D&D. &D. We should start with that. Um, I played as a kid, the first edition, and um, I would play, my, my older brother was the dungeon master, and he would always kill me off in the first half hour. <laughs> Whatever I did, I'd end up in a gelatinous cube. Just, there was no saving me. Jonathan was Elliot in E.T., basically. <laughs> That's right. And now my 10-year-old son plays every week. He's here today. Samson, where are you? Say hello. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I have been an avid player since I was 14 years old when I was an actor on the show Freaks and Geeks. Yeah. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Thanks a lot. And, uh, my character was a geek, and he was a, he was a huge fan of Dungeons and Dragons. I had known peripherally about it, so I, I decided, being the young method actor that I was, to, to play a campaign with the fellow cast members. And immediately I fell in love with the world. Because as you guys know, anyone who plays Dungeons & Dragons is not just a game. It is really the feeling that you get when you play the game. And that really is what we try to, try to do here with this film. That, that sense of camaraderie, family, coming together as a group, uh, uh, facing obstacles that you don't know what to expect. I mean, so many things that, you know, much to the chagrin of the DM doesn't know what's going to happen. And, so that is what we wanted to capture, and of course that very unique brand of humor that I think sets us apart from anything else in the fantasy space. So it was, it was a real excitement for us. So since all of you guys are D&D fans, I have to ask, uh, and more just broadly movie fans, what in the film are you most excited to share with the audience? Well, for me, it's the chance to bring to life these creatures, these places, these people that we've only been able to sort of imagine in our heads and to give solid matter to that. I mean, it's such a thrill. You're going to see things today and then eventually when the movie comes out that, you know, you've been playing or hearing about or imagining for years. And now that we have the, the visual effects technology um, and also practical effects in the movie, we're able to bring those to life. And that's just so exciting to us. Yeah, we have the geniuses at Legacy Effects doing all of our creatures and animatronics. It's really important for us to do a, a real fusion of practical and visual effects. So we have the top visual effects companies doing it, ILM and MPC, and Legacy, who gave you Baby Yoda. So what more can you ask for? Grogu, 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 Grogu. I missed that one. <laughs> no, I, I think for, for me, the thing that is, uh, the theme that I think always binds us when we watch a movie is this sense of family, of found family, of finding like this group of people and kind of connecting with them. And, and like, that's what makes Guardians, Guardians. That's what makes the Avengers, the Avengers. And I think you look at like these groups that come together, the personalities clash, and they face a giant obstacle that they have to kind of become a family over the course of it. I know it sounds like kind of, you know, but I'm a very emotional guy, so it, it is kind of just the thing I love the most. And what this journey has is really that, because these folks don't really all belong together, and, uh, and they've learned to love each other, and I feel like I've fallen completely in love with this cast along the way because of it. It's really, really fun to watch. And that's the thing I'm most excited about about the film. Well, talking about the cast, I think we've waited long enough to bring them on out. Everybody welcome the cast of Dungeons and Dragons Honor Among Thieves, starting with Chris Pine. Michelle Rodriguez. Yeah, he's 
Nebraska Jackdaw. <laughs> Sophia Willis. Yeah. And to round it off, Hugh Grant. How are you guys feeling? Excited to be here? <laughs> awesome. Well, let's get into it. Uh, I'm going to start with you, Chris. Uh, tell us a little bit about what drew you to the film and who you play. Um, so I wasn't a big DMD here, but my, my nephew's, um, who's now 13 years old, is a huge player. Was writing his own campaigns, was playing every week. And um, in fact, when, when I talked to John and Jonathan about, about doing this, they said, let me just send, send you over like a little gift package and, you know, all, all things D&D. &D. And I told my nephew about it. I said, why don't you come on over and we'll open it up together. And to see his eyes when this little treasure chest opened go from, you know, big to, to bigger, I, I knew something was up. And then we decided to get my whole family to play, to do a, a round of it with his, his Dungeon Masters and... Um, it was an amazing thing to see all of my family light up in that particular way. And I, I hadn't seen that happen in my family in, in years. And from, you know, my father who didn't really want to play, my sister who thought it was kind of a pain, to how, you know, how it just slowly snowballed and everybody got super stoked on it and really excited. And then three hours in, you've completely forgotten that, you know, you, uh, that you don't want to 10 minutes before it or whatever. And um, so, yeah, it, just, it was a surprise to me that I hadn't really found it until 42 or whatever. And, and I had this, I had this, uh, I know, I tell you that. I had this, I, this idea, it's like if, if there's one game, like in high school, I thought to myself, like that should be played in every single high school or school across the nation. It should be, it should be D&D. Yeah. Because, because don't you think it's like, you can get the bully and the jock, and of course I only speak in John Hughes terms. <laughs> <laughs> you know, all in a room, and I guarantee you, in 20 minutes, no one will remember what kind of, you know, class they came from, and who their best friends are, and who the dork, dork is, and all that stuff. They just want to play and have a laugh, and that, I saw that so distinctly and so clearly, it became, um, I just thought it was such a great world and an energy that I wanted to put out in the world is to spread the, the gospel of D&D. &D. Yeah. Yeah. yeah! I mean, I mean, I just grew up in Jersey, man. You don't, you don't grow up in Jersey without playing D&D. &D. It's just, you know, what you do. Um, at 15, 16, 17 years old. I hadn't played in over 20 years till the boys uh, called me up and said, hey, uh, you into playing a, a Viking? And I'm like, sure. <laughs> Barbarian, but. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, but yeah, it just brought back all these memories, you know, being a, a kid in a basement uh, goofing off with my friends, you know. It's a, it's, it's a beautiful experience. And, I think role-playing games are awesome, and I think more people should do them. <laughs> and she kicks ass in this movie. Boy, that is true. Yeah, on to you, Regan. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah, I've always been D&D &D adjacent. I think I came in and I enjoy computer games that do the math for me. Uh, <laughs> I basically grew up as Eddie Munson, like I was uh, picked on a school being weird and foreign, and I went home and I made angry guitar music, played Chrono Trigger and Diablo, you know what I mean? <laughs> um, so I kind of came into it through that way, and so I think that that world of, I know a little something about escapist fantasy that gives you no limits, that gives you kind of this big open world of possibility that may not necessarily always be open to you in your real life, but it is there the second you get a group of people together. And I find that in a slightly less inspiring way than our leader over here, kind of by the same thing. Um, I've always found role-playing games super inspiring in that way, so that's the way I came in. <laughs> I like to play Paladins by heart. Sophia? Yeah, uh, hello. Uh, yes, I... <laughs> um, yeah, I, pl 
play D and I started in high school. Um, I started getting into those D and D podcasts, like Critical Role and Adventure Time, all of that stuff. And um, it kind of opened up this whole new world because I started meeting these people in high school who also play D and D, like my teachers and everyone. And um, uh, I actually left my old school to uh, uh, a transfer to a new school halfway through. And right when I left, my old school started a D&D club. Um, so every day after school, I take like a 20 minute transit back to my old school and <laughs> run in and play D&D with my old lab teacher and everyone. And um, that was one of the most fun I've ever had uh, in a high school. And I still think about it to this day. And um, I still try to get together with my old friends and, and play another campaign, maybe DM one day, I don't know. But uh, yeah, no, I, I love D&D. That's awesome. And here in my notes it says, Hugh has always been a lifelong D&D fan, is that? <laughs> <laughs> I think you mixed it up with s and <laughs> not wrong. <laughs> I've been an enthusiastic dungeon master for some years. <laughs> that's, a, that's a British pastime. <laughs> National sport almost. <laughs> I believe that's why the Jonathans thought of me for this. <laughs> My reputation. <laughs> but no. What a lovely film to be in. It's really funny. It made me laugh a lot. And um, what else can I say? How nice to be here. How nice to be here. Uh, <laughs> Comic Con. Believe it or not, this is you's first Comic Con. Yes. Next we we did try to come with um, sense and sensibility, but we were turned away. <laughs> yeah, I don't see any cosplayers for sense and sensibility out here. What the hell? <laughs> well, hey, let's bring it back to Chris. Uh, you are a part of an awesome group of actors. How was it working together during production? It was a lot of fun. We uh, we shot in Northern Ireland, and it was the during. Uh, the UK's lockdown, so there really wasn't, you know, much else to do besides work. And uh, so, by virtue of that kind of containment, we were our own self-sufficient band of, uh, you know, misfits. And uh, set chemistry is a, a difficult thing, and it's an alchemy that you can only really test as you work and see how it plays. And thank God, I think we all got on well together. And, um, Pass the time, and, and that's really what movie making is. It's just a lot of time hanging around and shooting the shit, usually. So, um, we had a great time doing that, uh, honestly. Um, and I think the joy of, of uh, J&J's script over here, the, there's a, <clears throat> I guess I always kind of call it, it's like a Spielbergian energy to it. It's the films that I grew up with in the 80s. It, it, it just feels open and light and buoyant and um, your job is to, uh, like good improv, just kind of keep it alive, keep the, the energy and the music and the scene alive. And I like that kind of filmmaking, and it makes for a nice energy on set, because you're not, you know, you're not trying to, to fix all of the, the world's woes with, uh, you, know, um, uh, you know, deep sadness or whatever. There's certainly pathos and good, deep and great emotion in this, but. I would say that I guess the word I think of is the kind of the buoyant, kinetic, fun, lively, popping energy to it, and that uh, I think we all glommed on to and really uh, uh, rode with. Oh yeah, <laughs> Spielberg. Take, take that comparison. That's so cool. I think the filmmakers might have a clip that they want to show. Did you bring the clip? I, I, I thought you would. Uh, uh, we left it at the end. Uh, as long as it doesn't uh, start with. Uh, bu -bu 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 -bu. <laughs> <laughs> the That's actually in the movie. all those technical di difficulties yeah. out of the way. Uh, 
Yeah, just a caveat. Uh, this is a very unfinished film still. You are, it's fresh off the Avid, which is an editing device. Oh, you know that. <laughs> you know that. Uh, so, you know, you might see some visual effects that are not still there yet. You are literally the first people to see all this. And, um, yeah, it doesn't, I don't think it requires too much setup, but essentially our group of, uh, of uh, campaigners here are um, trying to find this helmet. And um, the way, the only way they can do that is to uh, raise some corpses and ask them some questions. So here's the clip. Of course. So there was mention of a search for a relic. Can you give us a little bit more about that? I don't know. Can we? Uh, well, they, they've got this. Jeremy, why don't you answer that? <laughs> There's, is there a red dot on my forehead yet? Tell me when there's the red dot. I know I'm not, I'm not supposed to say more. No, in the movie, there's a lot of questing in the movie, as you can imagine. And our team is on the search for something that they think will probably solve the issue that they're facing. <laughs> we'll find out if it does, right? Am I right? We'll find out. Is that big no. enough for you? <laughs> he should be a politician. <laughs> That's the exact answer I was looking for. <laughs> Okay, well, we can take it to the cast then. Um, based on some of your classes, I'm assuming some of you, like Michelle, who's a barbarian, and Reggae, who's a paladin, uh, had to really prep as warriors. I'd like to hear about that if you want to start with Michelle. Yeah, lots of working out, lots of protein shakes, lots of gas. <laughs> <laughs> lots of push-ups, lots of sit-ups, lots of lifting weights. Uh, it, you know, during COVID, you could get lots of frustration, so I kind of got Jeremy to hook me up with a punching bag by my trailer. That is accurate. <laughs> that helped a lot with the stressful days. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, I had a blast training. I, I gained uh, about a good 10 pounds of muscle for it. No, it was, it was I, I, I really did enjoy, you know, chiseling out the body, you know? Great. Right. How about you, Ray? I know how to follow that up. <laughs> um, yeah, lots of push-ups, lots of sit-ups. Lots of, uh, I, I got to swing a sword around for a living, do you know what I mean? Like, that was just everything that you ever want growing up and coming into this business. Um, I got really, really good with the sword. Uh, there was lots and lots of like stance training, so like my thighs were killing me and I had the best ass in my life. <laughs> Just... <laughs> we can wash clothes on them! <laughs> Um, no, literally just the best time you can possibly imagine in this job. I spent time training and slaying dragons, you know what I mean? Obviously, you've been involved with many beloved films. I'd like to know uh, what stood out about this one to you in terms of like maybe location and scope. It was really getting my bottom in shape as well, I think. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, what, was the, what was the appeal? Well, I'll tell you the big appeal. Is that what you just asked? Because I can't hear very well. Sure. Is that what you asked? Yeah. What was the appeal? Yeah. The appeal was that I found the script incredibly funny. I hate all scripts. I'm notoriously uh, negative. And to my astonishment, I was sent this thing which really made me laugh. I thought it had a real Monty Python vibe to it. Uh, you know, such as the clip you just saw. And um, I think that was, a, that was a main thing. And uh, quite a juicy role for me. Nice costumes. I'd never, I'd never, I'd lived in the UK all my life. I'd never been to Northern Ireland. It was fascinating to go there. And um, and then this uh, amazing cast. You know, I didn't like the directors very much. <laughs> Feelings mutual. <laughs> no, I did. I loved it. <laughs> I love you too. It's beautiful. Um, so, in addition to everything you just said. D&D uh, &D wouldn't be what it is without its awesome and magical monsters. Do any of you guys want to give hints at what we'll get to see from that? Well, you're going to see some soon. Um, you know, as you know, there's literally a monster manual, and there's hundreds and hundreds to choose from, so we had to make some tough choices, figure out which monsters and creatures would suit the story, which you all would want to see most, and which we could bring to the screen convincingly. And so it was a real conversation, constantly figuring out which we were going to feature. And I think you'll see we have a lot of your favorites, some lesser knowns. 
Yeah, and uh, what what you will see uh, is not it. Uh, we have dozens of monsters and creatures in this movie, and uh, dozens and dozens of spells as well, if that interests anyone. Uh, and they are all true to the lore, and it was really fun kind of figuring out what would work best within the context of what we were watching. And we we um, worked at every step of the way with the Wizards of the Coast, um, who were an invaluable resource for us from before, you know, when we were writing the script all the way through production to try and make sure that what we were doing was in line with the lore. Um, so, you know, I think for hardcore fans, hopefully they'll see, you know, the, the reality of the game reflected in there. And for those who don't know the game very well, it's still going to work because it's a fun movie. Awesome. Well, on that note, we actually do have another early clip, so let's go ahead and check it out. Now, if we can try to keep the questions about the movie specifically, um, and yeah. Hello. Oh, there hello. Is. Hey guys, my name's Sam. Uh, my question is for the cast. If right now you guys were all to be sucked into Dungeons and Dragons, kind of Jumanji style, what class would you be? <laughs> what? Let's start with you. What, what class do you think that you would be if you were sucked into Dungeons and Dragons? The highest class. We <laughs> 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 can make our way this way. So if you want, Sophia, if you want to go down. Here. Oh god. Um, well, since all of us are actors, I would say bard, right? That's a good choice. <laughs> so a universal bard is your answer. Universal bard. I mean, I've always preferred support classes, just so you can kind of be a little step back from the action, but kind of take all the credit because no one else would survive without you. And support classes do not get enough credit, so I'm going to count that. I'd definitely be in the wizard category. I like the idea of being able to disappear and appear whenever the fuck I want to. Excuse my language. <laughs> I like the sneaky. <laughs> bard. 24-7 bard. <laughs> that would like, if Leroy Jenkins was a class, that'd be me. <laughs> sure, and then next question. Hey everyone. Hi Chris, nice to see you again. And um, my name's Luke. Um, my question is, uh, if you could uh, cross over D&D &D with one other franchise, what would it be? It's for uh, everyone, the question. Sense and sensibility. <laughs> I mean, does anything beat that? <laughs> uh, foundation. I would, I would mix Dungeons and Dragons with Foundation. Asimov's work. That would be really cool. Sick. <laughs> D and in space, bro. <laughs> yeah, but what about Top Gun? <laughs> Tom Cruise and Wizards. <laughs> I'm in for that. Albert is pretty cool. <laughs> Sweet. But if there is one universal truth, is that the party is in need of a healer. There you go. Before we get to the next question, I want to point out that there's a custom tavern experience from the epic world of Dungeons and Dragons here in the Gaslamp, which I went to visit last night, and I was curious if any of you guys did. We did, yeah. Yeah, it was awesome. It's kind of scary, actually. Mm -hmm. um, you get a glow-in-the-dark drink, which you can have with or without alcohol, so there's that. Wait, and you can go into the gelatinous cube. I feel like we're not selling the best bits here. I love the sound system. I'd love to DJ in that sound system. It's pretty sick. And if you play your cards right, you might be turned into a red wizard. <laughs> but only if it's play. possible. Awesome. Okay, sweet. Next question. Hello, uh, my name is David. I just had a question if there was any game-specific Easter eggs in the film. I think I saw the cartoon characters yeah. walking around. Yeah. But is there anything else, like maybe someone refers to a fiend folio or a DVs and demigods in the movie? There are absolutely a ton of Easter eggs that we loaded in there. Uh, some things that we weren't even aware of that the Wizards of the Coast were helpful enough to, to, to help out with. But, uh, 
Yeah, if you, if upon multiple watchings, I think you you would actually see many of them. Uh, obviously, if I gave them away, though, it would, then they wouldn't be Easter eggs. An Easter egg, right? It would just be an egg. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Next question. Hello, everyone. My name is Nico Holt. To ask my question to the cast and filmmakers, will we get to see any villains relating from the game for this film reboot, like the Beholder? Mind Flayer, or Vecna? Mm -hmm. huh? <laughs> you will see multiple villains, multiple monsters that weren't just in there. Uh, but we'd ruin it if we told you everything. Yeah. And there are characters from the lore as well that you'll see, so uh, hopefully it'll be satisfying. Gives us enough of a runway to lead into, if we're lucky, multiple films that we can explore. Many more of these awesome characters. Sweet, next question. Hi. Was there any funny moments or funny pranks that happened behind the scenes? There's one that, that comes to mind that, that I think relates to the clip we just saw. When we were shooting Hugh on top of that, uh, on top of that pillar, um, there was a moment when he was on top of it and the, and the line that he says is, uh, this is much higher than we discussed. Please take me down from here right away. And uh, the, the special effects gentleman who was operating the, uh, the lift that he was on top of did not know that that was the line of dialogue and freaked out and started taking the thing apart and taking Hugh down in the middle of the shot. And uh, we had to stop it because obviously he was, he was, he was acting. <laughs> He's that good. I am rather good. <laughs> um, no. No pranks come to mind, uh, but I, I do remember one of the biggest challenges was trying to find, uh, we wanted them to go through this, this wheat or oat field that was not green. And in Northern Ireland, that is way harder than it actually seems. Uh, we went on hours and hours of location scouts trying to find a yellow field. And you'd think that that wouldn't be that hard, but uh, we finally, after like 12 hours of scouting, found this, this oat field that we ended up buying acres of oats so that we could film on it. And so if anyone wants oats, <laughs> I've got... We own Paramount and E1 own oats now. That was <laughs> I don't know if they know that, but they have. Not for human consumption, though. <laughs> They're quite old, uh, but if you have a horse... <laughs> well, we were leading horses through in that scene, and they kept eating the oats, and we had to reshoot that moment. Horses like oats. I don't know if you know that. Awesome. <laughs> love that, love that. <laughs> what, another question? Uh, yeah, my question's for the whole cast. Um, it seemed like you had a great time shooting this. Would you all be down to do a sequel? Absolutely. Um, uh, let me just say, what I love inherent in that question is a lot of positivity about what this film will do. <laughs> and so, because that response had so much positive energy, because I can believe that you believe in the power of our Dungeons and Dragons film, I have been given four tickets to the Dungeons and Dragons Tavern Experience. It's a first entry situation. <laughs> and they are yours, my friend. You don't want oats as well? <laughs> we have oats. And a lifetime supply of oats! <laughs> Next question. Hi, uh, I'm Mark from Denmark. Uh, I have a question for Reggie. I'm sorry? As a paladin uh, from Reggie, yep. uh, are you staying more lawful or are you going more of a chaotic way? <laughs> I mean, I feel like that's a spoiler. Is it not a spoiler? How, how far into. Um, Jeremy? <laughs> Directors? <laughs> I, I think um, the choice is very clear once you meet the character. And it's... Yeah, no, that's it. It's just character. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, dude. <laughs> You're gonna get him in trouble. Yeah. Next question. Hi, y'all. 
Max here. Uh, Hugh, I have a question. What do you think your spirit animal is after uh, doing the movie? And the readers at Horse and Hounds appreciate you. Wow. My spirit animal. I don't know. I, I suppose I'm a tiger. It's always been my nickname in the bedroom. No, mostly in the dungeon. What did you? And the second part of the question. What was the horse in the house? Oh, horse in the house. Yes, yes, yes. Is there anyone here from Horse and Hound? <laughs> they generally turn up to most. Because <laughs> there are horses in this, right? And hounds. And, and indeed hounds. Spoiler that's, alert. That's why we, we, we had you in the film. Yeah. <laughs> Next question. Uh, hi there, my name is Alec, and this question is for the directors and the producer. Do you think, without giving anything away, there is any chance we could see some cameos from some popular faces in the D&D community, like Critical Role, uh, Dimension 20, or Adventure Zone? There is at least one cameo of a well-known, well-liked D&D player. Um, beyond that, I don't think we can say. I, we but definitely cannot say. That, that said, we're huge fans of Critical Role and uh, are so so happy that they helped to sort of pave the way to D&D stardom and, and getting people involved and, and knowing about it because uh, I think they've, they've done an incredible job and they've got some awesome material. And this will be the last question. Um, hi, my name is Nate. First, Carl, I'm subbed. Thank you. Nice. <laughs> and if you could take any item from the set, which one would you take? Well, Chris took a bunch of things from the set. <laughs> she took a horse. <laughs> Thank you. I would take a, a dagger sword, because it was very, very cool. Oh yeah, that thing is cool. It lights up and everything. And you can pull off the handle and it's a dagger. Our, our friends at Hasbro will have that available for you. Dude, by the way, uh, his outfit I would totally like wear for Halloween. His outfit is sick. <laughs> Especially if it comes with a sword. That <laughs> you know how I was like checking for spoilers behind your back? <laughs> Pretty bad. Sophia? Uh, uh, I had a slingshot. Oh, yeah. An arm slingshot thing, which will be a prominent thing. And I, I, I would, I like it. I mean, it's a uh, good, I don't know, it wouldn't be very useful in real life. <laughs> but, you know, I mean, it was fun. Uh, <laughs> um, and I, I wore horns in the in the show. Magnetic and, ones that kept falling off. Yeah, but uh, they were pretty cool. I, I like those. I don't know. Actually, I wouldn't take those with me. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's actually that. That's it. Wait, can I change my answer? Can I take the fish that was covered in KY Oh yeah. No, no too late. That's, <laughs> that's in my bedroom. <laughs> you. We well, were, we you it's okay. a child asking the question, just keep that in mind. <laughs> uh, for many years I always take home a couple of extras. <laughs> Extra 
costumes. Uh, I've got quite a few now. <laughs> and I, on this one, I've got a couple of very pretty uh, extras I'm very, very pleased with. They're in my dungeon now. <laughs> You know, the one thing that we were encouraged not to take was, was the money. Because obviously, as to, to Dungeons & Dragons players, the, the, the coins are very unique looking, and we created a ton of them, and they're quite authentic, and cost way more than uh, the real money that they represent. And so, I think by the end of it, the crew and cast and I collectively stole thousands and thousands of dollars worth of them. <laughs> there was none left when we needed it later. There was, uh, there was no coins left. It was uh, outrageous. <laughs> and I know a lot of the weapons, the screen-used weapons are actually at the tavern. Is that... Yeah, there's, there's a few things from the movie at the tavern, yeah. And a few, um, a few things from our friends at Legacy uh, effects um, that, are, that we had on the set. There's a dragon board, um, which you kind of see the detail. And the yeah, wonderful workmanship and craft work. Something we haven't really touched on is that we really made an effort to use practical effects as much as digital ones. Which is not to take anything away from the geniuses at ILM and NPC and others, it's just that we felt, you know, we love sort of the fantasy movies of the 80s, Never Ending Story and all that kind of thing, and then we wanted it to have some real physical stuff on set for the actors to interact with. Which made it much harder to film, by the way, because we had these cutting edge animatronics and like face capture that uh, would translate to the servos and the facial muscles of some of our creatures and that so... That poor guy with the fan inside right. with the yes. dragon right. head, that was gnarly. A lot of overheating actors. If you but, watch carefully in some scenes, you can see the guys operating the monsters dressed as people in the scene, so... <laughs> it's very cool. I gotta say, that's the coolest part, you know, because after years and years of making these types of movies and technology growing the way that it does, shooting on a green screen with golf balls sucks balls. <laughs> you know, so having like some real cool, you know, animatronics on set is really helpful. It just makes you really feel like you're part of what's going on. And you get to see the artists, man, do their thing. It's beautiful. It's really cool. Thanks, guys. The son of Gary Gygax, Luke, has honored us with his presence here today. So Luke, wherever you are, thank you for being here. That's the creator of Dungeons and Dragons. But before we go, there's one last treat for everyone. We chose you all here at Comic-Con to be the first people we share the trailer with. So here it is. The world debut of the first trailer of Dungeons and Dragons Honor Among Thieves. 